My name is Jess Johnson and I'm the Fabrication Workshop Manager here at the Melbourne School of Design as part of the University of Melbourne. And here we teach a, a range of uh, bachelor and, and master's degrees as well as PhDs that focus on multiple design disciplines such as architecture, landscape design, urban design. So recently we've purchased a 4 Mac 508 machine to really try and complement and extend some of the existing equipment that we have and also be able to play around with new materials, new processes and new techniques. We were, we've been exploring uh, vacuum pouring machines for, for a couple of months now looking for uh, a fit for, with the features and facilities that we, we have here and from all the ones that we were looking around at, the Formec machine had all the different capabilities and, and also importantly had a lot of the safety uh, features as well that, that we need in a facility where, where a lot of students are using the equipment. Uh, some of those key features which we were really interested in was the, the pre-stretch and, uh, and how we can use the, the different heat zones within the heaters itself uh, to be able to quickly heat up and also manipulate different areas to different amounts. Currently we're, we're developing a project that is an acoustic panel treatment for a studio space upstairs in our building, a meeting space. Uh, and it needs to be a, a very light wall mounted uh, project and we thought this would be a perfect chance to test out the capabilities of the thermo, the vacuum forming machine. Uh, and we wanted to, to see if we can push the boundaries or try and use it in an unusual way and thought that the pre-inflate function of this would actually, has a an interesting capability to actually blow uh, objects up at, through a frame. So the idea now, once we've got these shapes, is that we'll cut a profile around the outside of them and have, having a variety of different geometries that will fit together within these connection areas. They'll then be mounted on the wall and connected to some sort of base plate. This is something that we're looking forward to testing and experimenting with to see if it'll be able to achieve similar outcomes. It'll then be hung on a wall that can only really take a very light structure, so that's why this is a great process to be using for that. Um, and this is just some early testing that we've done from some fairly large balloon kind of bubble shapes to more uh, constrained with geometry with straight edges um, to, to smaller uh, little bubbles that are complex designs. And here, this is another test and experiment that we did in terms of 3D printing. So, different types of printers from sort of cheap, low cost de desktop mounted printers which print in ABS and PLA. Um, here's the sort of outcome of the, the tests that we did against these, these 3D printed parts as well. We're quite interested in what happens when, when we're pushing the boundaries of these processes as well. So how this overheating might actually produce an interesting pattern in itself uh, and how we might be able to manipulate the process a little bit uh, to produce unusual and unexpected outcomes that we can then design and take advantage of. I think the vacuum reformer as part of the fabrication workshop has really increased the opportunities and possibilities that can be made in the workshop. New ways of designing and incorporating into our current workflow. It has really expanded our ability to create models, one-to-one -one prototypes and even working products in the fabrication workshop.